Today, I'm going to be sharing with you five rookie mistakes of my own that you definitely don't want to make in your business because they can be pretty costly. Coming up. Hello and welcome back. I'm Karen Valoria Miguel, owner and founder of Canada Bliss, handmade crochet hats and accessories. And as a handmade strategist, I've had the honor and joy of helping other knitters, crafters, crocheters, entrepreneurs, and artisans build businesses that bring them great joy. And in today's video, I'm covering the top five costly mistakes that I made as a rookie and I don't want you to make in your own handmade business. So if you want to build a handmade business that lasts, then keep watching. Now, when I started my business, I did my best to try and make sure that I built good processes from the get go. But frankly, there wasn't a lot of resources for me. So I had to kind of make up rules of thumbs and practices that were similar to other industries, but really not a lot of people were doing what I was doing already. So I set up processes and best practices, but there were times when I would take risks and I would step outside my regular business practices to make exceptions in order to hopefully make a bigger sale or make more income. My first rookie mistake I made was when it came to craft fairs and trade shows. One of my rules of thumbs was that I didn't apply or pay for shows that I hadn't already walked and explored and really investigated and done some research around. And there was one show I did, which it was quite a bit of money and I didn't walk that show before I did it. In fact, what I did was I was invited by a friend that I met at a trade show and he was like, it was the greatest show. He made so much money. I mean, I should have known that maybe it might not be the same for me because he was a jewelry exhibitor and I was a knits exhibitor. So I should have checked it out, but because it was in New York and it's quite a trip for me, I went on what he was saying and I paid for participation in this trade show. I went there, paid for all the travel expenses, made samples, paid for my booth. And when I got there, it was a bomb. One of the reasons you want to walk a show ahead of time is because it gives you a chance to observe the vendors, see their price points, see how many people in your category are writing orders. My price point was completely wrong for the other types of exhibitors. The section I was in was wrong. The entire show was just not right because there was a lot of other imported stuff that was at a really much lower price point. So people could get into the same category as me, but in a much lower price point and so I wasn't making sales. The good thing about it is I got to talk to other vendors and gauge the traffic. How busy is their booth? How often are they making sales? How much are they charging for their product? These are the things you definitely want to go to. And like, how many competitors do you have? Do they already have somebody who sells almost exactly the same thing that you do? And if so, is it the same niche? Is it the same style? Is it the same vibe? Once you do the proper research, then you can make a fair estimate of whether you think you might break even. If you talk to other vendors, some of them will even tell you whether or not they're like breaking even or whether or not they made the cost of their booth back. But yes, I made the mistake of doing this very expensive New York show that was not suited for my price point or my product. My second rookie mistake has to do with hiring contractors. Now this is not my crocheters. All the crocheters I've ever met, whether I hired them or not, were absolutely fabulous. I adore them all. I just wanna be clear that the contractors I'm referring to were carpentry contractors. So I hired a carpenter contractor to do a booth for me that I wanted to build for a trade show. And I didn't call or look up his references. He sent me links to different websites where his work was showcased. And I was so new to hiring a contractor for, for anything that I took his word for it. And I went by the pretty pictures and he gave me such a wonderful price point that I thought, oh my gosh, I could save a ton of money if I had this guy build my booth for me instead of renting it or buying it from a prefabricated trade show booth company. I took that risk because I wanted to save money. But the rule of thumb where if it's too good to be true, it probably is was absolutely true in this situation. The first show I did with this fella, he set up the booth and it was fantastic and even took down the booth and, and stored it for me. But then the next show I needed to do, which was even more important because I'd done the show prior and the exhibitor officials were looking for my booth to look a certain way because I took a picture of it. And during the build day, he didn't show up. Yeah, <laughs> so I was... I freaked out to say the least, and I had to do a very, very fast rush job 
to create curtains because I stayed there till the night waiting for this fella and he was nowhere to be found, wouldn't answer his phone, just abandoned my call even though I had called him days prior and the day prior and the morning of to see if he was on his way and he was always saying he was. Well, he wasn't. And it ended up this fella on the day of my booth setup was arrested for a very serious crime. And my booth was at his farm way in Northern Ontario. So to make a long story short, I thought I'd never see this booth again, but my husband was like, you paid good money for this, you have to go. And I'm like, I don't wanna go because I feel like it would be dangerous to get this booth because he actually wrote me saying that he couldn't leave his, uh, his home. <laughs> so I had to come pick the booth up. So I was like, okay, this is extraordinarily dangerous and I'm not sure if I do this. I was ready to just write it off. But I have a cousin who is an RCMP officer, which is like the FBI in Canada. And she escorted my husband and I and stayed just like, you know, on the outskirts of the farm when I went on with our truck to go pick up the booth. So anyway, I did get it back to make a long story short. But boy, should I have checked references way, way better than in that situation. And sometimes it's worth it to pay a little bit of extra money to make sure that you have a reputable person doing work for you. Now, my third rookie mistake where I stepped out of my own good business practices was doing an entire order without taking a payment ahead of time. Now, this was a wholesale order. And my rule of thumb always was take the wholesale payment and get a credit card number before you ship the item. In this case, I was, I will have to be honest, I was a little bit impressed with this person's store. He was a clothing designer who already had a booming business in the US. He opened up a store in Canada and he was looking to carry my products. So I was excited to make a order for him and build the business relationship. So I didn't ask for a payment ahead of time, nor did I collect a credit card number because I figured like I could probably pay it. No, listen on. So anyway, I bought all the supplies on my own money and made the items, shipped the items to the client. And these were really fabulous high-end pieces that I'd made for the client. And I dropped them off and they said that they would call me with a credit card number because the owner didn't have his credit card number there with him. And they never provided me the, with the number. And they started to sell the products without providing me with the number. And they even called me to tell me how well the products were selling. So I figured, okay, they're calling me to tell me how well they're settling. They're going to pay me. So I would keep following up for a payment. Then eventually they just stopped answering my calls and they never paid me for the product. So I ended up spending a lot more money hiring a contractor to do follow-up collections. And the contractor actually had to go there, pick up the remaining products so that I could hopefully recoup my costs and sell them someplace else and still make money off of the items I'd made for this order. It was a horrible mess. I totally didn't break even. And from that point on, it was I was absolutely certain that I would always, always charge before I shipped unless I had a super long-standing relationship with a store that I know could reliably pay me for an order. Now, I hope these first points were helpful for you. And if this is interesting to you so far, you definitely want to hit subscribe and the like button so you never miss more helpful information in future posts. Now, let's keep going. My third rookie mistake that I've made in the past is buying without too much research. Now, this still happens happens occasionally, even in a well-established business, you think a product is going to do well or a trend will last longer than you anticipate and you buy way too many supplies or you make way too much product and you're stuck with it. Now, I'm a huge advocate of listening to my customers whenever they give me feedback about new things to create, complimentary items. And it is important, however, to validate and research and test a new category or a new fiber. A few feedback suggestions from customers said that I should make items items in a certain product category. So I spent hundreds of dollars making these samples. I was just certain, oh, these are gonna sell because I already sell similar items to these. And once I released the, the line, there were barely any sold. Like I, I hardly sold any. Maybe I sold like six pieces. In retrospect, to fix this problem, I already know I should have done way more competitive research in this product or category. I should have made just the test samples and placed orders based on the sample pictures instead of making a whole bunch of items 
right at the get-go. In fact, with the small number of orders, I probably should have considered even canceling the orders that I had, but what I did was to recoup my costs, I sold the samples, and I simply didn't continue making that line. My next rookie mistake that I made was I spent a lot of my time on activities that didn't lead to sales. I spent a lot of time building my company brand recognition, trying to get likes and followers without a clear plan of how I was going to turn those likes and followers into actual sales. It was finally when I got consistent about my everyday business practices where I took the marketing efforts I was doing into converting into actual regular sales. One thing I learned is that you always need to be ready when you're speaking with customers, press partners, any sort of sales channel to lead that connection into a sale of your product. Now, if your business activities aren't creating sales for you, there is a problem in your sales generating strategies. I'd be happy to help you out with this if you'd like to book a free strategy call. Because friends, if you honestly want to avoid costly mistakes before you even get started, or if you find that you're at the point where you have already made some of these mistakes, then definitely sign up for one of my upcoming workshops where we discuss how to resolve a lot of these different mistakes. Or either book a 30 minute call with me, it's completely free. I'll include the link below. And I hope you continue watching for more content to help you move forward and build the handmade business that you love. Now, if you like something that I've covered today, please let me know in the comments. I have an idea of the things that you really enjoy or give me a thumbs up and subscribe so I know things were helpful and if you have any questions at all even better leave a message and let me know if there's anything in future content that you really like to know about and I can create a video on it for you. In the meantime friends I'll see you in the next video until then have a safe healthy and happy handmaking life. Bye bye!